Okay, two new rhythms here. This is what I'm thinking uh, for both of these. So they're kind of, I guess you call it like big picture ones, like what we could work towards. So let's see how things go this week and see if we need to uh, scale things back in terms of difficulty with this. So first one here, it's in a 3-4 time signature. And we have done this with uh, the single string, single note things before. And as we progress, we'll end up doing similar things again, uh, just to really drill all the rhythm stuff. But anyway, so I wrote out the notation two different ways. So the top part is, I feel, the easier or the easiest way to understand what's happening. So we have a quarter note tied to an eighth note, eighth note tied to a quarter note. So it almost like flips around there, right? Quarter tied to an eight, and we flip it, eight tied to a quarter. So we come in on the downbeat of one, and then we come in again on the upbeat of two, which is basically three eighth notes long or a beat and a half which is represented here with the dotted quarter note because a dotted quarter note gets a beat and a half here. Remember, when we dot something, we are extending the length of that note by half. So half of a quarter note is an eighth note. So a dotted quarter note is basically a quarter note plus an eighth note in length beat and a half, three eighth notes long. So we are going to continue to hit a downstroke, then an upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke. So I do feel the best way to really get a grasp on this rhythmically, making sure that everything comes in when it's supposed to, is do the old ghost strum stuff. So you're gonna hit the downbeat from the first chord you're going to miss the upstroke, miss a downstroke, and then hit the upstroke. So you're gonna hit, miss it twice. Hit, miss it twice. Hit it, miss it twice. Hit it, miss it twice. Whoops, I, uh, I hit it instead of missing it there. Hit it, miss it twice. Hit, miss it twice. Hit, miss, miss. Hit, miss, miss. So you're hitting the first of every three strums. One, two, one, two. Which essentially makes this a two across three polyrhythm because we have two chords evenly spaced across three beats. The chords continue to happen at the same time. So you can look at the chords having their own tempo every time you hit the, uh, hit the chords. That's an even amount, right? chords are being hit at a specific pace. The foot tapping, metronome following, that's happening at its own pace. So basically we have two different tempos going at the same time. The metronome is when we're starting off here is going at 60 and I don't know what the math would be for the court or the chords we're hitting but it's a bit slower than 60. So um, trying to think if there's anything else there. So this does build into like more complex stuff, uh, like doing three across four polyrhythm with 16th notes. No, four across three, sorry. And I'm pretty sure Decapitated has used that. It's, those kinds of rhythms are snuck in from time to time and, and various rhythms and whatnot. So it definitely is big picture stuff here, working towards being able to handle it all. So uh, let's get into this. Uh, we're gonna, uh, and just remember, just we're, we're going for control the whole time. Uh, really working on just making sure we get as much out of this as we can. Uh, if you hit 240 on this, 
go ahead and send over a video demonstrating that and at least at the 60 as well just to continue to make sure that the rhythm is solid and strong at those slow tempos which has been great you have been doing very well with that um, and typically with stuff like this well let's say we weren't doing the weekly thing what I recommend people do with when it comes to like working something up or just trying to get better at you know course material type stuff we could say like if you're stuck at the same tempo for three days three days in a row then that might be a good place to call it for whatever it is you're working on unless it's something you really do want to get faster well then that would be a different story we'd have to look at different strategies to get going faster so anyway count of three 60 one two Three, one, and one, and one, and one, and one, and one. So this rhythm right here is a really good exception to the idea of saying only what you play. You may have noticed I was saying the two as well as the three. That's because on something like this that is very spaced out, saying the downbeat numbers of what you are not playing on can be very helpful in keeping you on track for where you're at. So like going like the one, two, and three, one, two, and three. Just emphasizing what part of the beat you're playing on. It's like the one, two, and three. It's like say the one a little bit louder. Say the end of the two a little bit louder for the count. It'd be very helpful. Stay on track with this guy. All right, 180. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. I went with harmonic minor on this one. I thought it would sound neat. And oh no, I missed the chord change. What did I do? I did something wrong. Hang on a second, hang on a second. I goofed up what I would have planned on. goodness I forgot what the heck I had planned what I thought I wrote it out that's what it was that's what it was sorry about this it's like did I imagine doing it all right, yes, I did want that. Right into that. Uh, delete this. And then we're gonna go one, two, three. Okay. That's the progression. Yes, harmonic minor, A harmonic minor. Uh, so this guy, very upbeat focused, lots of upstrokes. And getting used to stuff like this is extremely helpful for getting really solid rhythm, really solid timing. 
So we'll strum down at the beginning of each new beat. But that's it. Everything else is going to be on the up. So making sure that the hand and foot are synced up is very helpful, very important. Again, every time the hand goes down, the foot goes down. The foot comes up, the hand comes up. So it's just all synced up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay. So this is something where I will count like everything, the two, three, and four. Even though we're not playing on it, I'll count it because it's very easy to get lost doing something like this. Um, and then notated two different ways again, just like the last one. Here, top line, we see lots of eighth notes being tied together. So eighth note tied to an eighth note. Basically, the upbeat is tied to the downbeat over and over again. Versus here, we're just using the quarter notes to fill everything in. Again, two eighth notes is a quarter note. So this way makes it very easy to see that we are carrying the chords over across those downbeats and down here it just looks a lot neater or uh, nicer cleaned up nice and neat there we go all right let's give this guy a try 61 2 3 4 1 I'm tapping the body of the guitar here. I also like doing that on those downbeats that are not played on because it really helps me keep in time. Out of 20. One, two, three, four. Next one, two, one, two, three, four. So for the theory stuff, what I'd like to do now, start getting back into suspended chords. And we will continue to use the, all the triad stuff and build with it, manipulate that. So we're going to keep reviewing those things. Basically, what I have here in this worksheet is a bunch of chords. Uh, so like... We're using all the natural root notes here and all the different chords. All the suspended chords that are listed here is suspended second, the sus flat two, the sus flat two, flat five, and so on. They all occur in a major scale. So things to remember. Uh, we're going to use a major scale to uh, help build these chords. And I should probably demonstrate one or a few just to clarify how we're going to do this. So I'm going to make a part two video here because I got to call a student right now. So I will talk more about the theory in part two.